e4. I play my Sicilians as usual, knight f3. And here's a very funny story. I'm thinking, is this a good moment to make my Sicilian Sveshnikov an official debut? Because I've been studying some Sicilian Sveshnikov lately. I want to teach it to my students and possibly also play it a bit myself. So I thought, why not? Why not? Especially since I am a blank page. I don't know anything what my opponent plays. It probably it's a very nice moment to play a brand new defense that my opponent hasn't prepared against me. Am I conscious that my opponents might be intimidated by my reputation? I don't know. Why would they? What kind of reputation? I don't know. <laughs> so d4 is the principal continuation. C takes 94, knight f6, knight c3, e5. So Sicilian Sveshnikov, this is my official debut. I already had played it online. Um, maybe some of you already had seen it in some of my online games. A couple of blitz games, nothing really serious. So this is the first classical game in the Sveshnikov. So you mean that I'm a higher rated player, they might be intimidated? I don't know. Maybe somebody is, but I don't think about it, to be honest, during the games. Now b5, d6. Yeah, and here's a lot of theory. I mean, bishop g5 is really old. Continuation, a6, b5, bishop b7. Uh, in the 2018 World Championship match, Fabiano Corona against Magnus Carlsen, uh, Fabi was trying to crash through with 95. 95, takes, takes, there's 97, 98. Very interesting positions. So I kind of know this. I mean, not really maybe like super well, but I think I can I can already play this at, at a good level. And my opponent plays bishop d3. I'm like, what is this? I mean, what is this? I have never seen this before, right? What is bishop d3? I mean, obviously it's a developing move, but this cannot cause me any problems, can it now? So I play a6 and b5. Uh, sorry, no, no, no b5, what I'm saying. Yeah, b5 is actually, if I play b5, there's 95. Uh, white is all right. You would assume that, of course I know what I'm doing and I have a plan. And there's a very interesting line actually, you know. I play bishop g4, very annoying move. Annoying intermezzo move. I mean, I could play already d5, to be honest, because the bishop on d3 is blocking the queen. So take it and take it and take it and take it, and knight c4 and bishop c5. And I saw this position and I'm wondering, I mean, why, why white is allowing me to do this? Just take the center and finish my development easily. But then I remember there's this key idea of bishop g4, very annoying. Because queen d2 dislaunches the queen. It's just ugly. The bishop here is stuck. F3, I play bishop e6. I still play d5, but now he is going to suffer because of this weakened diagonal. Think about ideas like b5, queen b6, etc. Why not queen g2? There's no queen g2. Where do you see queen g2? There's no queen g2. But there is a theoretical line here, by the way. After a4, white stops a6, b5. And black is supposed to play bishop g4, bishop e2, takes, takes, and play something like knight e4, rook c8, etc. Oh, I blundered queen g2, yeah? Oh, I'm so sorry. What you're saying is that I blundered queen g2 in this line here, yeah? Yeah, I forgot about it. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The pawn is under attack, you're right. Of course. Just castle, I guess. And I can take bishop a3, b takes on a3, and whatever is this. I have definitely no problems. <clears throat> yeah, so the thing is, I realized I have to, you know, I have to already think about getting an advantage after the opening. 
Because bishop d3 is a move I've never seen before. So I play bishop g4. He play bishop e2. Essentially wasting a tempo for bishop d3, bishop e2. I take it. There's no knight e2. There's no king e2. These moves make just literally no sense. And, and we had several grandmasters after the game in the post-mortem analysis. Uh, one of them was uh, suggesting, why not knight e4? Knight e4, first include this move. And then, after queen d3, play d5. Now, this is really interesting. I couldn't understand if I need the knight on d4 or not. But actually, this slide, look at this, it's pretty cool. Uh, let's say, take it. Take on d5. He can't play c3. I take on g2. And rook c8. And this is pretty great. Because c3 is rook c3. That's a fork, basic idea. And I'm somehow getting the better position. Actually, I'm not sure what happens after bishop b2. A bishop b2, castles, bishop d4, uh, e takes on d4. Okay, maybe white somehow lives. It looks a bit unpleasant. b5, these are weaknesses. So I had the same idea, basically, to play d5, but without including knight d4. I play d5 immediately. Knight e5. Uh, if he plays knight e5, queen d5, the same idea. The opponent g2 is under attack. I'm threatening to play bishop a3. So he played knight c4. Bishop b4. So, again, uh, mission successful. I have completed my development. Uh, I'm already better. So threatening knight c3, bishop c3. So that's why he can't really take on e5. Sacrificing a pawn was something my opponent really, really wanted to do, but unfortunately he can't do it. If I take with the knight and the bishop, white suddenly develops a killing attack. Look at this. And some sort of a knight e6, king d7, and looks just ugly. Just plain ugly. But the thing is, I don't have to take with the bishop on c3. I take with the knight. And now the key idea is the queen is under attack. He has no time for bishop a3. And to make things worse for white, I'm playing basically against everything queen d4. Hitting the knight and hitting the rook in some lines. Let's say queen g4, queen d4, queen g7, a long castle. The knight is under attack and the rook is under attack. So white is just lost. And if he would trade the queens after queen d4, let's say queen d4, I can already give up the pawn. Like knight x on d4, you can collect it, either knight e5 or knight e6, I don't think it really matters. But look at my knights. They're just dominating the position. So I don't even care about the pawn here, maybe I can take it, but just whatever, even rook c8, f6, rook c7, rook c8, etc. These knights are really powerful. So he simply cannot sacrifice the pawn as much as he wants. And he had to accept that bishop d2 has to be played. I take on c3. He has to take with the bishop. If he takes with the pawn, I simply play castles, castles, and simple queen c7. Uh, this knight is misplaced. If he plays knight e3, he always needs to account for knight f4 ideas. This knight is annoying. The bishop is dead. So again, he has no choice. He has to take, I have to take, I castle, he obviously can't take on e5, because of rook e8, and queen e7. So, the question, the million dollar question, is this position possible to win? Is this possible? You know, I had no illusions that objectively, it's not enough. I mean, he has weaknesses, right? Weak pawns, completely shattered. But we have already traded so many pieces. Probably, with not that difficult defense, he should be able to make a draw. But I mean, he still needs to find it. 
Of course, not much to complain, but again, I'm, I'm trying to play it for the win because I already was not complaining about my position already here. I mean, I know I'm playing for the advantage, right? I'm not fighting for the equality because nobody plays bishop d3. So I'm thinking, how do I extract more? How do I extract more? And still, it might be not enough. So I keep playing here, 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 here. All of these moves make per perfect sense. Okay, maybe rook d1 is not really precise because I want to play queen c5 to hit the knight, hit the pawns. And if he plays queen e3, there's queen e6, some problems in some lines with the knight and the pawn on a2 in some lines. Yeah, specifically here, actually, he has queen c5, so not, not yet. But this queen e6 might be unpleasant. He played queen e4, a normal move. He wants to play knight e3, knight e5, c4, c3, etc. Makes perfect sense. And now I play queen c5. So his pawn is kangy. I want to play b5 and collect the pawn. If he takes it and takes on e5, this is really easy. Basic back rank mate. Obviously, he can't do that. So, he spends here like half an hour and plays h3. And I'm thinking, where is my advantage? I do not see it. So b5 looks risky. b5, knight e3, knight f5, knight e5. He has gone to play. I don't want to play this. Can I use the fact that queen is barely holding the knight? Can I play f5? I mean, if you play something like queen e2, maybe f4 looks interesting, stopping knight e3 idea, e4, e3, then b5, or maybe even the simple positional e4, f4, f3, multiple weaknesses looks really great of course he is going to play something more aggressive queen h4 and what do i do next if i play e4 he plays knight e3 my king is a bit weak there's some queen g5 ideas some g4 ideas okay maybe not g4 but queen g5 c4 i'm never going to be in time to collect these pawns my king is weak I'm thinking maybe I can play f4, disconnect the queen from the knight. He takes, takes, and plays something like knight e5. I can't take on e5, there's queen d8. Yeah, I see nothing. So I really want to play f5, but I realize I can't do it. But what do I continue? I'm thinking backwards. All right, maybe I need to make a quiet move. Like something like g6. I mean, king g7 protect the king, but then he plays knight e3. Queen c3, he plays knight e5. That's a fork threat. Okay, maybe not g6. What about h6? Yeah, after h6, he plays a4. What's my next move? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I just don't see the follow-up. I'm thinking, what about h5? And then g6, king g6, he still can play a4. Yeah, finally I decide I have nothing better than to play b5. I have to play this. And I'm thinking after knight e3, there's some pretty cool lines. I take on c3. Um, yeah, knight e5 is the main move. If he plays knight f5, actually I need to be careful of some tricks of queen c7, knight e7 ideas, but I very carefully calculate there's nothing. I play g6. He can't take on c6 with a threat of uh, the fork because his rook is hanging. Uh, he can't also play queen c6 immediately because after rook d8, I don't have to take the rook. I take the knight. So it's a very, very shaky position, but I want to make sure I'm not blundering any basic tricks. And if he plays something like knight e6, I play rook e7, rook d7, knight e4, etc. So I'm just very, very solid. So I figured knight f5 is not causing me any problems. So I'm focusing on knight e5. I play queen c5 to control some critical squares. He plays knight c7, probably hit the rook. I'm thinking takes, takes, rook c8. And after knight a6, queen a3. And somehow he can't defend the knight. Look at this. I mean, the knight is imprisoned. 
I know my back rank is very shaky, so I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm not missing anything. I'm not missing anything. I'm just in time. Also, I want to make sure there's no tricks with knight b4, or knight c5, or rook d6, or rook d7, or queen f5, queen f5, queen a6. I defend everything in time. Everything in time. And I'm thinking, okay, probably he can't play knight a6. What else he can do? He can play rook d7. I play knight b8. Hit the rook. Hit the knight. Defend the pawn. Queen b7. I take it. I'm playing knight f8. I protect everything and the pawn on c2 remains a weakness. So as soon as I see this, I'm getting really excited. So this probably makes a really nice trap for my opponent to fall into. And that's why I play I play b5. Yeah, so I calculate knight b5, knight d3, queen c3, knight d5, queen c5, knight c7, takes, takes, rook c8, knight a6, queen a3, and make sure there's nothing. Although I mean I am a bit concerned about my background weakness. <laughs> and now comes the shocker. I was like, what? Wait, what? Why are you doing this? I mean, you can't do this, right? And I'm thinking, what happens after rook d8? And I have a feeling something is, something is not right here. So knight e5. I can't take on e5 because now there's no background issues. He plays king h2. So what about rook e8? He can't play f4. The king is pinned. <laughs> there's some cheapo. 97. And apparently, he's threatening with a mate. There's my back rank issue. The queen is under attack. I can't play queen c8. So the only thing for me to survive is queen e7, and the white is simply up a pawn in the endgame. Of course I saw this. But it was like a small shock that I blundered this cheapo in my calculation, so I have to take with the knight. And now the point is after knight e5, f6, none of these tricks work anymore. Because... Yeah, no, this is not the threat anymore. Because I have solved the issues of my back rank. He played knight e3. Now my knight on d8 is slightly passive. I mean, I have to take the pawn, don't I? I take the pawn. Uh, knight f5. Uh, I thought knight f5 I can play, I think, knight e6. Queen e5, queen c2. Everything seems to be protected, although white is super active. Super active. He played knight e5, queen c5, and rook d1. Now, how do I capitalize on my extra pawn? I have a feeling it's not enough. I mean, white is so active here. I was already thinking, should I regret the choice that I took the pawn? But then again, I convinced myself I did not see anything better. So I play knight e6, the same idea. If he plays queen e5, I play queen c2, hit the rook and hit the pawn on a2. Just one move and I'm safe. He played c3. Threatening to play queen e5. And uh, something like queen a3 hitting the pawn on a2 was definitely under my radar. Because queen e2, queen c2, I dislaunch the queen. Rook d2 is queen c1 check, he loses the rook. But I was so afraid that he has plenty of activity here. But actually, engine says this is nothing. Yeah, engine says this is chill. This is chill. I mean, this is nothing. Just play f6 and there's no attack. f6 intermezzo move, knight c7 and the black controls his... Extra pawn with no compensation for white. You know, okay. I'm not gonna argue. I mean, all kinds of knight f6 need to be calculated precisely. Whatever is this, yeah. So what I did, I decided to trade the knights because this knight on d5 is so annoying. And uh, during the game, I had a suspicion that he has to play queen b4, forcing matters because I can't really say no. Queen a7 is definitely not the way to go. Knight e7, rook d7, the white is incredibly active. So take it. Take with the knight, opening path for the rook. King of 8, here, here, and here. And from afar, I did not see if I can make a progress. 
I mean, I did see that knight a7 hitting the rook and attacking the knight. I have king e8 hitting the rook in return. But I did not see physically the next move. Which apparently is simply knight e6. Knight e6, knight e5, f6, and black keeps the advantage. There's no check. King e8, white loses a piece, and I just collect a pawn on c3 and continue having a large advantage. So he didn't play queen b4, he made the correct choice. He took on c7, queen c7, rook d3, protect the pawn. And I'm thinking, he wants to play a4 next. Get rid of the weaknesses, because this is what you're supposed to do. When you are the weaker side, and white is the weaker side, he's down a pawn. What do you want to do? You want to trade as many pawns as you can. When you are the stronger side, with black, having an extra pawn, what do you want to do? You want to trade as many pieces as you can. And I think that the pawn on a2 qualifies as a weakness anyway, so probably white wants to play a4. Can I play queen a5? With the back rank weakness? I don't know. I'm afraid. Queen c6 looks very sensible. Rook f8. My pieces are disconnected. Is this good enough to play for the win? I'm not sure. So I decide, okay, whatever. I need to play g6. I need to play it safe. And I expect fully a4. a4, b takes, rook a4. Now I have an outside pass pawn. Something like rook e6, c4, e4, rook e3, etc. I'm thinking maybe I can somehow expose, expose his king by playing e3 with a lot of checks, outside pass pawn. But objectively... I have no illusions. With a perfect play, this is a draw. Unfortunately, this extra pawn very often doesn't really matter. So what I uh, so what he did, he played g4. Big positional mistake. Unfortunately for White, he decided to seek a counterplay at a king side. With the idea h4, h5, h6 try to feel my king uncomfortable now unfortunately this decision will work against white because white also is weakening his own king so i simply play king g7 give him the chance to commit another mistake h4 another easy move queen e7 h5 is simply queen g5 i protect everything the pawn on g4 now is a weakness there's no h6 threat so the pawn on h4 is under attack, he played g5, and rook c8. And after this move, I knew I'm winning. Because rook c4 is a very big threat, hitting the pawn on h4, which is a weakness that white created himself. So I activate my pieces. Uh, black, tr uh, I'm sorry, white tried a nice chance with rook d5, selling the pawn on c3. And if I would take it, rook e5, and let's say something like queen d7, I mean, I'm up a pawn, but white is still pretty active. So something like h5, g takes on h5, and do something there. Not, not really clear. But the thing is, the pawn on c3 is going nowhere. So I need to force the queens off the board. Rook c4. Really nice move. The pawn on h4 is more valuable than the pawn on c3. And if he trades it, I will simply play rook a4. And most likely, one of these pawns will fall with the precise maneuvering. For example, something like king g2, here, here, here. He loses a pawn, another pawn. So I will have two connected pass pawns at the, at the king side. So he decided to do not, to, not to do that. And now, take it, take it, and queen d7. Multiple threats. Threat, threat, threat threat and he can't defend so he played queen f3 simplest move is training the queens and now what i need to do is basically create a tsuk position for white which is king of eight he has no moves if he plays uh, f3 hitting the pawn hitting the pawn he loses another pawn 
If he plays something like rook d2, I hit the pawn, activate the king, this is a threat, go back, go back, and hit the pawn again. So he loses another pawn. What he did, he played, uh, instead he played king e1, which is another way to lose the pawn, because after rook e5, there's rook g1, rook a1. The pawn on a2 is gone, and I simply collect the pawn, set the pawn on a6, forcing white's resignation. 